I'm already working as a filmmaker and photographer and behind the scenes of storytelling. I've been living in Chiang Mai since 2010 and I just kind of noticed that every year the smoky season, they call it, which is crazy to think of something man-made as a season, right? It would just get worse and worse. It was a lot of complaining and blaming and nothing productive was coming out of it. And then there was one year where it was like particularly bad and I just started to feel sick myself and I didn't really understand why because when you're looking at the media or if you're looking at the, the app from the government that explains air quality, it would say that it's green when it's like PM 2.5, like 150 outside. I wanted to understand the problem more fully. I started by making a Facebook page called Fire Reports Chiang Mai and it was to translate information to Farang so that they could know how to report a fire. And it could also be like an online database for saying like where all the fires are. So I started to film it because there was a retiree who lived here and he said that he moved to Chiang Mai thinking that he was moving to this place where he could retire and be healthy. Like He's like, can you interview me? I want to talk about my experience. And then every time I followed one person, they would be like, oh, go and talk to this person, go and meet this person. So like one person just led to another person. And then it started to become apparent that all of these people that were working on the same issue were very disconnected and weren't communicating with each other even though they were working towards the same goal. I became really obsessed with it. I interviewed over 40 people. I realized that I had to turn it into something just to start the conversation for the next smoky season. I was so nervous because I was presenting it to scientists at Chiang Mai University the first time. This is like a really academic audience. How can I make it academic but also that anyone can watch it and get something out of it? Since then, everyone is really aware of air quality now. It's been screened in most international schools and some universities and they've started to use air filters in the classroom and also record air quality. Even after I released it, I still kept filming. I got help from other filmmakers in Chiang Mai. All of the aerial shots, people donating their time to help me. I had meetings with several government officials, like I met the head of the Pollution Control Department, for example, who had watched my film. My film made it to, you know, the governor of Chiang Mai, it made it to the prime minister's office. So people were aware of it. I would just probably include more of the ridiculous things that they do to combat the haze problem. Like the water cannons and the giant air filter. They brought it from Gongen and then it, they put it at Tapa Gate and they said that it would suck up all the pollution for two kilometers but they only left it there for 30 minutes for the cameras and then they took it away. There's more lung cancer and lung disease in this part of Thailand than anywhere else because of the burning. Like I almost feel like meat should have labels on it like cigarettes. It's kind of like this abstract thing that's burning. Everyone thinks it's not connected to them. But actually if you're going to macro and you're buying chicken from them, you're buying chicken that's eating the animal feed that's connected to the burning. Unlike any other pollution, it's the most like democratic pollution. It affects everyone. Like, 